the month of Ramadan has a lot of virtues that are connected to it. If a person wanted to give the khutbah just about the fudail or the virtues of Ramadan, then he probably should have started giving the khutbahs before Sha'ban to talk about all of those virtues because there's so many. You're not going to come to talk about all of the virtues of Ramadan in one khutbah, but they are many, numerous. One of the most important virtues of Ramadan and one of the most important aspects of Ramadan is Ramadan is an opportunity for a person to save himself from the knot of Jahannam. There's not a single person here, despite our differences in ages, despite our differences in the mustawa and the manzila that you're on in terms of your taqwa and your commitment to Islam, we're different in our sizes, our colors. There are a lot of differences amongst us. There are no two people here that are exactly alike. Even if they come from the same father and the mother, they're not exactly alike. Although that is the case, everybody here unanimously, inshallah, wants to save himself from their hellfire. Ramadan is one of the best ways to do that. The month itself, one of the virtues is to save yourself from the torment and the punishment of the hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in an authentic hadith, إِذَا جَاءَ الرَّمَضَانِ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ If the month of Ramadan comes, the doors of a Jannah open. What doors? The physical doors and also the opportunities to go to Jannah. And the doors of a Jannah, of, of the hellfire, are closed. It's an opportunity to be protected from going into the hellfire for the one who does it the right way. He mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Lillahi utaqa'u min al-nari. Lillahi utaqa'u min al-nari. Wa dhalika li kulli laylatim in Ramadan. Every single night in the month of Ramadan, from the first day to the last day, every single night, Allah Azza wa Jal will free some people from the hellfire. People who did things in their past that they may be deserving of going to the hellfire. Like uquq al-walidain, disrespect to their parents, not praying and falling to kufr and shit. So many issues. But when Ramadan comes, the first day to the last day, every single day, Allah frees individuals from the hellfire. Another proof. Ramadan is about getting away from the hellfire and out of it. From the benefits and the proofs of this benefit is what he described Ramadan as. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Junnatun yastajinnu biha al-abdu min al-nar Fasting, whether it's in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan Fasting is a shield that the person can protect himself from the punishment of the hellfire That's three hadith clearly indicating, clearly showing One of the benefits of Ramadan is freeing yourself from the hellfire He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam من صام يوم في سبيل الله بعد الله وجهه عن النار سبعين خريفة. Anyone who fast any day in Ramadan outside of Ramadan, anyone who fast on any day, Allah will remove his face, his body from the hell fire by seventy seasons. Another hadith said one hundred seasons, and there are other hadith. What's the point? One of the benefits of Ramadan is that this rukun from the arkan of Islam, this ibadah from the ibadat of Islam, from the hikmah of Allah, it is an opportunity to free yourself from the hellfire. There are many other things to consider, many other things to think about, many other things to do, but this is one of the things that should be prioritized. It's an opportunity for a hadith that we mentioned here today. But which Ramadan is that? That's the Ramadan that the individual does it the right way. Now I'm going to tell you something today, inshallah, that will enhance, enhance your ability to save yourself from the hellfire. Whether it's in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. And unfortunately, because the ummah, the ummah, the nation of Muslims, we are living in a time close to the hour. As a result of that, knowledge is a little bit. Knowledge is not a lot. 
And as a result of that, there's a knock-on effect and there's fitting and there's drama because when we don't have knowledge, we don't know what we're doing. As Allah described the Kuffar of Quraysh, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْحَرْفِ They're those people, they worship Allah and they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing at all. So you young people who are here, it is not enough that you just grow up with the name Shaquille Ahmed Muhammad Bilal. You have to be a Muslim with that name Shaquille Ahmed Muhammad Bilal and you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, what's the difference between you? What's the difference between that? So I'm going to tell you something today and this is what the khutbah is about. Inshallah, something to enhance your Ramadan, saving yourself from the hellfire. This issue, if you comprehend it, if you implement it, if you practice it, it will, inshallah, for the rest of your life, be a tool by which you, you, you can save yourself and it enhances your Ramadan. Rasulullah came to his companions, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, and as he used to do often, he used to ask them questions. He said to them on this particular occasion, Ala ukhbirukum ala men tuhrimun nar. Should I not tell you people on the person? Should I not tell you people, the individual who, the hellfire is haram for him. It's haram, like sharab, like all of that, gambling. The hellfire is haram, he can't go into the hellfire. Ramadan is a month, ibadah, get you out of the hellfire. He told them, you want to know the individual who, the hellfire is haram for him? They say, yes, Ya Rasulullah, who is that individual? He said, The hellfire is haram for each and every individual who is easy in dealing with other people. And he's easy on his own self. And he's gentle, sahl. He's easy, sahl. He's not complicated. He's an individual when you meet him. It's like drinking water. It's not complicated. You understand him? He understands you. Not that difficult individual who, when you meet him, he expects you to know what's in his heart. He's extremely, extraordinarily difficult to comprehend. A mother, a father who's like that. Extremely difficult to comprehend. When there's a problem between you and him, it's easy to solve the problem. All we have to do is come and sit down, and I say, I'm sorry. He says, I forgive you. He says, I'm sorry. I say, I forgive you. And we keep it moving, business as usual. He's not like, he's that way. Easy. Not that individual who, when something between you and him transpires, that's it. You're his enemy, he's your enemy. Your family is his enemy, your family is enemy. No salams in the street, no love in the street. Complicated. Complicated. He said, the hellfire is haram on everyone who, he's easy with other people. And he used the word layin, layin, hayin. Really, if you take any Arab off the street, you say, what's the difference between these two words that the prophet said? Hayin, layin. The Arab won't know because they lost their language. Hayin, layin. They mean the same thing. It means being easy, but one means being easy with other people, and the other means being easy on yourself. So before Salat, he used to say, Linu bena aidi akwanikum. When you straighten up the lines, Linu bena aidi akwanikum. Straighten up the lines and be gentle and easy. Don't be like that guy who he wants to implement this sunnah, but he's hard, he's rough and tough, and he's stepping on people's feet. So the hellfire is haram on the one who is gentle with others. He's gentle on himself and he's sahl, sahl, like the name Suhail, Suhaila, easy, gentle. And the last description he said, قَرِيبٌ مِنَ nas, And he's close to the people. Easily accessible to the people. Like the Prophet wasallam. Although he was the Sayyid of Bani Adam. And he was the Ashraf of Shurafa. Although that was the case, the slave woman could come to him and say in his ear, Ya Rasulullah, this is my problem. And he would just listen. The young man can come to him. And he has a problem, and he says, Ya Rasulullah, this is my issue. And he wouldn't say to him, get out of here, you're a youngster. Any and everyone can come to him. He was easily accessible. Not like sometimes individuals in our community. That individual, Ramadan, that individual, this is the one who the hellfire is haram upon him. To enhance that, go into Ramadan and be a person who is easy with people and easy on yourself. 
be a person who is sahl, a person who's qareem in an nas. How is the individual not easy with people in the month of Ramadan? Many ways. It's the parent who has a child. He's eight, he's nine, he's seven, and he makes that kid fast a whole day in Ramadan, and the kid is not ready for that right now, especially during these long hours. So he has to allow his child, if he sees he's struggling, just do half of the day, just do what you can do, do the weekend. As for the father, the mother, who wants to give tadri to the child to learn how to fast, and that's from what the companions used to do, Ridwan Allahi alayhim. As for the parent who does that without taking into consideration the dynamics of his kid, you are being shadeed. And the one who the hellfire has been created for is for those kind of people. The people with the shaddik, the people make things difficult. Rasulullah didn't even like in El Islam the one who speaks in a way in which he goes overboard in trying to be articulate. He described him as the cow who his tongue is going all over the place. The one who goes overboard in trying to be very, very intelligent. We come from the village. We just simple, easy people. We don't need someone coming up here in the member talking to us in a language over our heads and we don't understand. We don't comprehend. Prophet Muhammad said, don't talk like that to people because it's not easy. You're the messenger, give the message to the people in the way that they comprehend. How are people tough on other people in the month of Ramadan? They're tough on people in the month of Ramadan and that you see Fajr comes in at 315, 320. But we're told you have to stop eating Sahur 30 minutes before Fajr time. 40 minutes before Fajr time. When the Prophet of Islam said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna ma'ashur al-anbiya umirna bi thalatha. All of the prophets, all of the messengers, they were ordered to do three things. One of those things that they were ordered is to delay the suhoor. To take the breakfast before you fast as close to Fajr as possible. You don't intend, intentionally go beyond Fajr time. No, you don't intend to do that. But you set yourself up that if Fajr comes in, not as prayed, if it comes in, for an example, 345, you can continue to eat your suhoor up until 344, 343, 342. As for an hour before, 45 minutes before, Allah didn't tell the people to do that. The hikmah of the suhoor is to give the people the ability to continue to fast throughout the day. There are many examples, Ikhwani, of the rough and tough people who are in the cultural, ignorant way of fasting. What's the difficult one? Dealing with other people. Many examples. What about the one dealing with his own self? And this is really what I want to focus on. The one is tough on himself in the month of Ramadan because he's sick and he doesn't even have to fast. I know someone close to me. They died a few years ago. They had high blood pressure and diabetes. They're from Africa. They couldn't see themselves, an elder. He couldn't imagine not fasting in the month of Ramadan. And he's an old man. When he fasts, he becomes sick. He loses consciousness. You have to put him on the bed. Rahimahullah ta'ala. He becomes incapacitated. As it was over Ramadan, Allah doesn't want that. Allah said in the Quran, La taqtulun fusakum. Inna Allah kana bikum rahima. Don't kill yourselves. Allah was forever merciful to you. Don't kill yourselves. So that individual who, in the month of Ramadan when he fasts, he has a headache. Most of us will suffer from headaches in the first day, second day. No problem. Go ahead and fast. The guy he smokes cigarettes, may Allah help us in this month to kill that habit. So as a result of not having nicotine, coffee, he, as a result of that, gets a headache. No, you have to fast. As for the one who gets a migraine, a migraine, that's the headache on the other level. You don't have to fast. And don't let anybody come and tell you, hey, I have migraines and I fast, so you must fast. Allah told us in the Quran, better than insanu ala nafsihi basira. Every individual knows himself better than the next person. You can't tell me what's my threshold of pain. You can't tell me. No sheikh can tell me how much pain I can handle and how much pain I can't handle. 
So this one got his tooth pulled in the month of Ramadan. He kept his fast. But he is not the example for everyone else. He kept his fast, so everyone else has to keep his fast. I get my tooth pulled, I don't have to fast for that day. So what's the sick one? As Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرًا فَإِدَّتُ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرٍ In the month of Ramadan, anyone who is sick, anyone who is traveling, then let him make up those days from another time. So the one who makes things difficult on himself is the one who says, I'm going to travel from Keithley all the way to London, and it's haram for me to break my fast. What are you talking about? It's haram. What are you talking about? The Prophet allowed people to break their fast when they were traveling. And some of the companions fasted, others didn't fast. The ones who didn't fast didn't criticize them, and they didn't criticize those. But in another incident, he was traveling to, battle, to the battle of Badr that happened in the month of Ramadan. He told the people, no one should fast today. Because they're traveling and they need their strength. No one should fast today. In another situation, they were traveling. When they were traveling, some people weren't fasting, some people were fasting. He looked over there, there was a commotion. He said, what's going on over there? If he was Hazir Nazir, if he knew the Ilm al ghaib he wouldn't have said, what's going on over there? He would have been there, he would have known. Hey, what's going on over there? What's the commotion? They say, Ya Rasulullah, there are a group of people who are fasting, and the heat, the heat is so strong that some of them fell out, they needed water, and they need people to fan them. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ذهب المفترون بالأجور those people were not fasting, they took all of the reward today. Why? Because they're helping the other people. The best of the community is the ones who bring benefit to other people. So the one who's not easy on himself is the one who says, I can't break my fast during this month of Ramadan when I'm traveling because the airplane is easy. I'm going to Pakistan in Ramadan. I'm going to keep my fast all the way. You don't have to do that. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But if fasting while you're traveling is going to cause problems, you're one of the people that the hellfire has been made on because you're tough on yourself. The Nabi told another man who was having difficulty traveling while fasting, fasting while traveling, It is not righteousness that you travel, that you fast while you're traveling. Being tough, being rough in the month of Ramadan, is that individual, that lady who's pregnant. She's pregnant or she's breastfeeding, pregnant or breastfeeding. And we tell her, you have to pay for someone to eat every day that you don't fast. And you have to make the fast up as well. Two penalties? His wife is pregnant. His wife is breastfeeding. The fatwa is, you have to pay for every day that you don't fast and you have to make the fast up. But that's not what the companions did. That's not what Ibn Abbas did. That's not what Ibn Umar did. That's not what Abu Huraira did. What they did was they told the women from their own households who were pregnant, who were breastfeeding, for every day you don't fast, just pay the food and that's it. You don't have to make it up. Why make the religion difficult on people? Because we don't know what we're doing. So what's the sickness that the person doesn't have to fast? If fasting is going to cause you to become sick, you don't have to fast. If you're already sick with something, diabetes, you have something, arthritis, something, and when you fast, it's going to increase that sickness, you don't have to fast. What's sickness? Number three, if a person is sick and by fasting, his shifa is going to be delayed. His shifa will be delayed. He doesn't have to fast. And he doesn't have to worry about it. He doesn't have to have any waswas in his mind. The people are fasting, I'm not fasting. The people are fasting, I'm eating. Prophet Muhammad told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, At-ta'imu shakir bi manzilat as-sa'imu sabir The one who eats food and he's thankful. The one who eats food and he's grateful, shakir for the food. He's in the same level as the one who fasts and the one who has sabr. So, akhwani fillahi. We're living in a time right now, people are unnecessarily rough and tough on themselves and on other people. And what else can we say is the natija of Boko Haram in Africa, Al-Qaeda around the world, ISIS around the world, Al-Shabaab in Somalia. What else does that come from? It just comes from people being rough and tough. Although many ayat, look, those ayat in the Quran, 
about fasting. Kutiba alaykum siyam. All of those ayat. And then the ayat ends by Allah mentioning, Yuridu Allahu bikum al yusr, wa la yuridu bikum al usr. Allah wants ease for you, and He doesn't want difficulty for you. That's concerning the ayahs of fasting. Allah wants ease for you, and He doesn't want to make things difficult for you. He said in our Quran, in this religion, وَمَا جَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرْجِ مِنْ لَتَعْبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمِ Allah hasn't made anything difficult on you in your religion. This is the mill of Ibrahim. There are many ayat that go to show Islam is an easy religion to practice. Islam is a simple religion to practice. Not like Christianity. It's complicated. The whole idea, three gods equal one and one equals three, that's difficult. Islam says no, simple, one God. If there were more than one God in the heavens and the earth, then the heavens and the earth would have become corrupted because it's complicated. Islam is easy. Five prayers a day. Very quickly they're done. Five equals 50. There's the cat. All you have to do is give 2.5% of your money. If you don't have the money, you don't even have to give it. Hajj is easy. Which Hajj you want to make? I want to make an Iqran. I want to make a Tamattu. I want to make the one that's easy for me. And then when you're doing Hajj, you can do this, you can combine, you can shorten. The whole religion is easy. But we come and we make it hard. Ramadan is easy for the one who knows what he's doing. Allah Azza wa mentioned those ayah. Allah doesn't burden you beyond your scope, beyond your ability. Fear Allah the best that you can. Don't go overboard. Prophet Muhammad described Al-Islam. He وسلم, said, Al-Islam, about this deen, Inna hadha deen yusrun, wa lan yashad the deen ahadun illa ghalaba. This religion is easy. Anyone who tries to go overboard in it and do everything, he will be overwhelmed, he will be overpowered. He will tell his companions that he wants to sing to the people to give da'wah Allah. The brand spanking new Muslim comes to our masjid. He never saw Ramadan in his life. Brand spanking new like a baby. This is first Ramadan. Maybe he'll accept Islam in the month of Ramadan. And we become rough and tough. You must fast. He's a Muslim. He should fast. He should pray. But we're going to look at his situation. Did you know from the ease of Islam that in Islam, fasting wasn't wajib immediately? It was up to you. If you want to fast, you fast. If you don't want to fast, you give sadaqah. That's it. It was easy. You choose. Why was it like that? The same reason for a sharab and khamr. Our mother Aisha said, may Allah be pleased with her. If Allah made drinking khamr haram, just like that, the Arabs would have left this land. So even the companions were given the opportunity. Get yourselves used to fasting. He's a brand new Muslim. Relax. Yes, he should pray. Yes, she should wear hijab. Yes, she should fast. But take it easy. Take it easy. Allah took it easy with the companions. From his names is, he is al-Latif. He is al-Halim. Now I want to share something with you brothers that shouldn't leave any doubt in your mind about the ayat of the Quran that described the Mustafa al-Mujtaba sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِنَّ رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ he is a rahmat to the alameen. The alameen, that word means, Rabbil alameen. Al alameen means everything other than Allah. There's Allah over his throne in a way that befits his majesty. Everything other than Allah is the alameen. His arsh, the malaika, the kursi, the jinn, everything else is the alameen. He is the Rabbul alameen. And Rasulullah was sent as a rahma to the alameen. To the mankind, to the jinn, to the malaika. He's a rahma. Look what happened. Sayyid Bukhari, Abu Huraira, he said, Prophet was sitting in the masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came, and in front of all of the people, he said, Halaktu, ya Rasulullah. I have destroyed, I'm destroyed, ya Rasulullah, I'm destroyed. Rasulullah said, wa ma what destroyed you? The man said, I had relationships with my wife during the day hours of Ramadan. If you go to the book by the Imam al-Dhahabi, a book that every Muslim who's worth his weight in salt should know about that book. The major sins, Kitab al Kaba'ir. One of the Kaba'ir that he mentions, breaking the fast of Ramadan without an excuse. 
That's one of the biggest musibas in Islam. That's one of the big ones right there. Someone breaking his fast. Someone not fasting in the month of Ramadan. Big, big mushkira. That man said, Ya Rasulullah, I have relationships with my wife. Rasulullah told him the penalty. He said, okay, do you have a slave that you can free? Because if you break your fast, you have to free a slave. The man said, I don't, I don't, I don't have a slave. He said, can you fast two months consecutively, 60 days, if the month is 30-30? And if you start fasting seven days, and then you miss the eighth one, you got to start all over. If you start fasting for breaking the fast in the daytime, and then you make a month and three days, you miss the next day, you got to start all over. Can you fast 60 days straight? The man said, I can't do that. I can't do that. You can't tell me because you got a toothache and you fasted, I can fast. That man is saying what he can do. I can't do that, Ya Rasulullah. I can't fast 60 days. He said, do you have the ability to feed 60 people since you can't fast 60 days? You made the penalty. Do you, you have the ability? He said, I can't feed 60 people. I'm poor. He said, go sit over there. Go relax yourself. He sat in the masjid. Things were happening. A man came to give sadaqah in the month of Ramadan. If a person doesn't increase his sadaqah in the month of Ramadan, he's not doing the Ramadan of the sunnah. I don't say that your fast is batil, but sadaqah increases in the month of Ramadan. Reading the Quran increases. Salah increases. We don't have the time to deal with that. If it doesn't happen with you, you're not doing the proper fast of the sunnah. Someone came. Here's some dates, Ya Rasulullah. A bucket of dates. Fi sabirillah. Rasulullah took it. He said, hey, you, you, come, come, come. He said, take this food, take this dates, take them, and go give them to 60 people. Rasulullah is helping him for his penalty, his mistake. His Muslim brother is helping him for his penalty, his mistake. Take the food and go give it to 60 people. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, Laysa fiha, Laysa bayna la biteha, afqur minni. There's no one in this city of Medina, no one in Keithley, no one in this area is poorer than me and my family. What I look like taking these dates to give it to people, and I'm poorer than all of them. I need it more than them. Rasulullah smiled, and he said, then take it, it's yours. Take it, it's yours. And he was the one who made the mistake. That's the Rahmah of Islam. That's the Rahmah of Islam for the people who want to blow people up. That's the Rahmah of Islam for the husband who's rough and tough with his wife. That's the Rahmah of Islam for the elder who's rough and tough with his kids. Rasulullah Sunnah is in one valley and we are in another valley all together. We're in another valley all together. So take it easy. Take it easy and relax yourselves. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'alallah ta'ala tawfiq wa sadaq. Someone may be sitting in the audience and they say, hey Abu, aren't you con contradicting yourself? You're telling us that Islam is easy, Ramadan is easy, but you're up there screaming and our ears, and the, but you look rough and tough. You, you, isn't that a bit a contradiction? The ease of Islam is not based upon your interpretation and my interpretation, or the interpretation of Amr, Bakr, and Zaid. The companion said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذْ when he used to give the khutbah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his voice would go loud, his eyes would become red, his anger would increase, his neck would pop out as if he was, or he was warning the people of an army, going to come and get them. So if there was an army of enemies, they're going to come get us. And I see them and you don't. I'm going to stand up and say, okay guys, they're coming over there, we better get ready. If I did that, I would be a person who was violent. So someone says, hey, this khutbah is not easy. What are you? No, easiness is not on your interpretation and my interpretation. Listen, people from Keithley, listen. Right now in this country, normative Islam, normal Islam is under attack. There's a program that came out about a week ago on TV called The Biggest Mosque in the UK. It was a masjid in London, the size of three football pitches. And that masjid was being run by Qadianis, Ahmadiyyas. That's the type of Islam that the people will accept. The Islam where you don't have to pray, you don't have to wear hijab. We don't preach hatred to the community.
be nasty. To, no, no. But we have to take positions against people. Ease. It's not interpreted by you and me, defined by you and me. There's an organization. I'm going to tell you the name. It's called Quilliam Foundation. People like that, beware and be careful of taking your instruction and your direction from people like that. Quilliam Foundation. People come up with crazy statements. And we ask Allah at Thabat. Because you never know. You never know. Ramadan can be a cause that a person will leave Islam if Allah doesn't give him Thabat. His wife can cause him to leave Islam. His job can cause him to leave Islam. His friends leave Islam if Allah doesn't give him Thabat. So Allah's Prophet used to make sajda. And he used to say, Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deen. He used to say that word about us. A dijal will cause people to lose Islam. Individual from Quilliam Foundation used to be an individual. His father is a sheikh. His grandfather is an alim from the ulama of Islam. From where you come from. All this monkey business. Boy talked around and said Adam came from monkeys. That's not what I'm talking about. Last year because of the long hours. He said Islam is easy. These hours are too long. We're fasting 18 hours, 17 hours. So what we should do is, we should only fast 15 hours, 14, 13 hours, and then the rest of the day we can eat, although the sun is in the sky. Because Abu Salman said Islam is easy. So when I tell you here Islam is easy, don't get it twisted. Don't you be coming, Ramadan comes to you, and you're watching TV, wasting your time, telling your wife, Abu Salman said Islam is easy. She doesn't pray, you don't pray. Abu Salman said Islam is easy. La, Islam is the month of actions and working. I told you the battle of Badr was in the month of Ramadan. That hadith, whoever sleeps in Ramadan is ibadah, that's fabricated. The month of Ramadan is the month of jihad. Jihad the nafs, jihad the nafs. You have to come to the masjid and pray more. You have to give sadaqah more. You have to give more food. You have to make more efforts. You got to do tarawih. You got to do more dua. You got to do more, more, more. But do more according to your ability. According to your ability. Take care of yourselves and be easy and gentle with yourselves for the rest of your lives. Should I not tell you the one who the hellfire is haram on him? The hellfire is haram on the one who is gentle on others, gentle with himself. Gentle on others, gentle with himself. And he's sahl, easy, and he's close to the people. May Allah Azza wa establish our feet firmly upon the kitab and the sunnah. And may he not allow us to die except as people of a tawheed. And may he make us of the ansar of the sunnah and muhammadiyyah. And may Allah Ta'ala give khair to this community, inshallah, and make this Ramadan a successful one.